Good afternoon. Well, I'm A.O. Fleming. I'm the Vice President for University Operations and Strategic Initiatives here at Albany State University. And I can tell you that this is a red letter day in the history of the university. Uh, we are truly excited about the partnership both with the University System of Georgia, our de legislative delegation, our community, our business partners, including Phoebe, Putney Memorial Hospital System, and everyone that's made this possible. Uh, we're, going to great, we're going to break ground today on a brand new building here on the Albany State University West Campus. Let's give everybody a round of applause. I'm thoroughly excited about this opportunity. I've had an opportunity to work with both Dr. Brinson and President Frederick since the inception of this project in 2018. I was just mentioning to our region, Barbara Rivera Holmes, that going through this project and being involved from the moment that it was a twinkle in their eye to the moment now where the building is coming out of the ground, working with our friends at the General Assembly, Senator Sims, Representative Now Jackson, certainly, uh, Yerda Green is the dean, and now Representative Sampson as well, and former Representative Winfrey Dukes. It has been a tremendous opportunity to share the goodwill of Albany State University across all of Georgia and to make sure that our students, not only the Darton College of Health Professions, but those in our biology program and our chemistry programs benefit from a state-of-the-art facility. We'll partner across the region to ensure that other university system of Georgia schools and TCSG institutions as well have an opportunity to take part in the great work that's happening at Albany State University. So without further ado, I'll be obedient to uh, the program that we put together here. I'd like to bring forward none other than the 10th president of Albany State University, Dr. Marion Ross Frederick. President Frederick. And thank you, Mr. Fleming. So we are absolutely excited about today. Um, this is not just a groundbreaking for Albany State University. This is a groundbreaking for the community of Albany, uh -oh, for the community of Albany, and also for Southwest Georgia. And so as we started thinking about what we wanted to do at Albany State, we started thinking about our strategic plan. Um, so as everyone, I hope, has heard, um, we have a strategic plan, uh, strategic plan 2025, and we call it the standard. And part of that standard is how we get to excellence. And so when we think about the experience that we want for our student body and the experience we want for Southwest Georgia, when we think about how we want to actually participate with health professions in the state of Georgia, this is part of that step. And as Mr. Fleming said, we started this years ago. So this groundbreaking is a culmination of multiple years of work as we actually started thinking about what role we want to play in health professions in the state of Georgia. And on this special day, um, I want to actually welcome our Chancellor, Dr. Sonny Perdue, and we'll get him to come up in just a second, but Do Dr. Sonny Perdue, who has picked up the mantle and made sure that we had this to happen. Also to Regent Barbara Rivera Holmes, also known as the President of the Chamber of Commerce on this part of uh, the land, also supported us through making this happen. Um, we have several legislators, and I will tell you all, the work that goes on behind the scenes to make this happen is absolutely phenomenal. And our state legislators made, made this happen for us. They, they pushed this. They made sure that when it went to the floor, they voted for it. And so I'm going to ask our local legislators, our state legislators, to please stand just so we can give them an appreciation for what they do for us. Thank you all for what you do for Albany State. It means the world to us that y'all are here to support us. Um, thank you for doing that, and thank you for doing it not just for this, for pretty much everything that we have to do. And I don't think the mayor is here, but Mayor Bodera, um, can we have our commissioners and other legislators from local stand up, please? Just so we can see who you all as well supporting us. Mr. Hayes, thank you so much. So when you see this health sciences building, um, what we're looking at is that we're not just looking for just one part of health professions, we're looking across the spectrum. So when you think about nurses, but also think about respiratory therapists, physical therapists, all the things that go in that bucket is what we're going to focus on here at Albany State. And before I get to close, I'm going to ask um, a couple of really important groups to stand for me. And so when I say this has been going on for years, it has been years. And so I want to ask our planning committee to please stand. Can our planning committee stand, please? Where did Mr. Fleming go and, and all the rest? And Dr. Brinson. Dr. Lucas, back there in the back, our facilities and construction. Let me tell you something. Um, we started this project before COVID. And through COVID, um, as you all know, we've had so many 
challenges with supply chain. And it is fascinating, it's excruciating at times, um, but this team would go back to the drawing board when they had to do something different and they would re-engineer this plan. And so when you look at the final plans, that's the work of so many people, this planning committee, going back to the table, asking our faculty, what do you want to see? Asking our students, what do you want to see? Our framework may have narrowed, then it expanded, then it narrowed again, and they, <laughs> they're all sitting here shaking their head. Um, it was a really difficult project. But it was one that they knew in the end, if we get this right starting out, it will be major benefits for us going forward. And so to this project team, I gotta personally just tell you all thank you for what y'all have done to make this work, for designing a building. I know y'all probably didn't know that was in your job descriptions, um, but it was, and you all have done a fabulous job with making it happen. I wanna also just say thank you to the Board of Regents. Our regents do a phenomenal job with actually understanding what we need as a university and supporting us through that process. And so they're our governing board, but they're also our partners. And they make sure that they hear us and they actually are doing the things that we have them to do and that we need them to do. So I want to say thank you to our Board of Regents as well. And of course, our university system office. Our office, university system office colleagues, are always on the phone with us, always making sure that we have what we need in order, making sure documents are signed, um, and that we're ready to move on. And to our partners, our construction partners, I think they may be standing up to speak, um, but to our construction partners and our design partners, thank you so much, because they heard our vision and they moved forward with what we wanted to design. So thank you all. And with that, I'm gonna get out of the way. Um, and let me just also just say, the day is beautiful. We all know we started out with an orange sky this morning. So please, <laughs> this, the day it turned out beautifully. So um, this is the right time for this. So I'm gonna bring up Dr. Sonny Perdue, our chancellor for the University System of Georgia. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Frederick. I do have a coat. Now, that's an inside joke. When I was uh, visited the Fort Valley State and Albany State of the blue and gold, I just ran off and forgot my jacket. So A.L. offered me his, but I just went without a coat that day. But I, I want you all to know I did have one and I brought it today. But you know what I think about this, Marion, since the Bible says, where there's no vision, the people perish. There was a vision here, and this is beginning the culmination of that vision. And uh, it's going to be good for this region and good for the state overall. I couldn't help but think, when I was going through veterinary training for all you medical nurses out there and the people who will benefit from this and all the planners. When I was going through veterinary school, I would have killed for a facility like this. In fact, there would a lot of, be a lot of goats alive today if we'd had something like this. But, because uh, that's what we were practicing on in that way. But nonetheless, these facilities are amazing. The first time I saw them, the kind of things they can do. And I want to thank our public funders here, our, our legislators for the support you give for these wouldn't be possible without your uh, allocating the taxpayers' money to projects like this. And uh, I want to commit to you as chancellor, as the university system, as our presidents, uh, we're going to make you proud of the way we utilize the funding that you all appropriate to the university system to make sure we use it wisely in that way. To uh, one of my boss ladies, Regent uh, Barbara Bear Holmes, uh, thank you so much. Barbara, in her business life, as president of the Albany Chamber, she understands all too well the confluence of economic development and higher education and how they come together, how one feeds the other. The economy feeds the resources that we do for education, and then the, uh, this, these type of facilities feed the economy, and the economy feeds back. So it's that flywheel concept I talk about, Barbara, uh, getting going far, uh, faster and faster, so that throws off energy for Georgia and the economy as a large. So this is going to be a, a great project. I know it's been a number of years, but it's always good when a plan comes together and the culmination right here in southwest Georgia. And I'm glad to participate here and uh, see this come out of the ground. Uh, it'll be a little while. Hopefully we'll all get anxious to come back and cut a ribbon to make sure that this project uh, uh, begins to be utilized for its purposes, to be, uh, to be utilized for health care, and the many other things that President Frederick uh, indicated today. So I'm happy to be here with you. I congratulate Albany State, all Albany, the community, and thank you for all of you who had the, from the planning to the processes to make it sure uh, this is going to be a great project for students not only here but across the state. And thank you and God bless 
Albany State. Thank you, Thank you Chancellor and President Frederick. Uh, we have a very important person that we'll introduce next, certainly in representing the General Assembly here in Georgia, is now Dean Gerald Green, the longest serving member of the General Assembly of the House of Representatives, Dean Green. And why it's so important, our legislative delegation and all of the General Assembly, we're super excited. Albany State University was able to receive in this past budget year an additional $980,000 so we could build the building that Dr. Frederick and Dr. Brinson set out to have us build. So representing the General Assembly today and certainly the chair of our legislative delegation here in Doherty and the dean of the House of Representatives, the longest serving member in the House of Representatives here of Georgia, my good friend, Representative Gerald Green. Well, good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity to welcome our chancellor uh, to the city and to the county here. We have so many things going on here that I am proud to, be, to represent this particular area of the state. Along with our state senator, Freddie Powell Sims, our uh, Bill Yerda, uh, Camille Hopkins is here, and we also have a representative elect with David Sampson. These individuals are working for you. And Chancellor, on behalf of this delegation, we welcome you to our city. We welcome you to our county. We welcome you to this particular campus to show you that we are building for the future. And it is very important to look at this step-by-step -step procedure that our president has been able to uh, foster in this community. We are proud of her leadership. We are proud of what she's doing with her staff and faculty here at uh, Albany State University. She's a strong leader and we want you to know that. We want you to understand that she is for education of our students who will make a difference in our community. And likewise, it is very important to look at uh, Barbara Holmes as a leader and we are so proud of what she's been able to do for this community as well and you chancellor we go back a long way and i don't know what to call you sometimes whether it's chancellor governor uh senator the list goes on and on but i can tell you it is because of his leadership that i know that georgia will move forward and we're proud to have you in this community today to look at what we're doing and making a difference in our students and our community. Thank you for your service. Thank you for all the things that you're doing. And may God continue to bless you and our great state. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Green. And now representing here, I believe, in a duality, we have uh, Regent Barbara Rivera Holmes, who's also the president and CEO of the Albany Area Chamber of Commerce. And as Regent Holmes comes, we want to thank her for ensuring that a part of the University System of Georgia's strategic plan included the construction and design of a nursing and health science assimilation facility here in Southwest Georgia. So when we tell you that the University System of Georgia and the General Assembly, the border regions themselves, and our community are dedicated to Albany State University, the proof is in the strategic plan. So without further ado, Regent Holmes. Al, thank you so much. You know, it's a, it did start off as a bit of a scary day with the weather. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's a big day in Albany when you're tossing some dirt, celebrating something new. I'll add that when you have a chancellor, former governor, former presidential cabinet member, when you have everything that we have going on today, it is a mighty day in our community. And that's really due to the leadership and the vision of so many who are here. And we've heard the word vision said a few times already. And this is what it began. I remember being around the table talking about what this could be many partners have led to what today we're celebrating and it just continues to to position our community and in particular Albany State University as a destination for innovative quality impactful education and in particular today health professions education this this facility wouldn't be possible without the generosity of our general assembly members and then, like so many others have done thank you for always seeing through the things that matter most to Albany and to all of southwest Georgia 
I want to thank all our business partners who influence so much of what we do and say this is what we need from education. And then business and education come together, as the Chancellor said, to make things happen. This is something that is powerful, that we're excited about, and we will be back to cut the ribbon. Our chamber members are here. They're dedicated to the university, to partnering, to making sure our programs are business relevant, to making sure our students are not just educated, but employable. So I feel very privileged to serve on the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia, and then also to head our Albany Area Chamber of Commerce and bring the two most powerful things that you can bring jobs and education together for Albany and Southwest Georgia. So thank you so much for letting me be a part of today. Thank you, Regent Holmes. And so it wasn't by accident, certainly we had a Regent Holmes in her role as helping with our economic development here in Albany go before my next two friends that we're bringing together. Uh, our colleague and friend Scott Steiner, the CEO of the Phoebe Putney Health System, was unable to be here today. However, he sit in his stead two fantastic individuals that certainly support the vision of Albany State University. I'll tell you a little bit about Phoebe and our partnership just most recently. Uh, about a year or so ago, they decided to make a financial investment in our Darden College of Health Professions. They are there to support nurses nursing faculty, Dr. Dozier, who's the chair of our nursing department, uh, also to be able to support students through scholarship support, through other programs in our health sciences department. So they're here today to make sure we do what we said we were going to do as our partners together to ensure it's in the best interest of all of Albany State University, Southwest Georgia, and Doherty County. So without further ado, my friend Brian, who is the Chief Financial Officer and Chief Administrative Officer at Phoebe Putney Health System, and then Evelyn, who is the Senior Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer, will come and bring their remarks as our partners in this endeavor. Brian and Evelyn, thank you. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. It's an honor to, to be here, and uh, A.L., thank you so much for, for having us. Um, you know, we're a trusted partner to Albany State, and we're so glad to be here. Uh, A.L. mentioned that Scott couldn't be here. Scott is actually in Savannah right now. He is serving on the Governor's Health Care Workforce Task Force, coming up with recommendations for Governor Kemp for statewide solutions for our health care um, uh, staffing crisis. Um, the Georgia Chamber reports that about 122,000 health care jobs will be needed uh, in the next three to five years here in Georgia. Nationally, 80,000 qualified nursing school applicants were turned away in 2019 because of insufficient resources, not enough faculties or, 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 or faculty to teach them. Georgia ranks in the bottom 10% of all 50 states for the total number of registered nurses compared to population. Uh, North Carolina, Louisiana, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi all have more RNs per population than Georgia. Locally here in Southwest Georgia, hospitals, physician offices, skilled nursing facilities, home health services, the health department, EMS services, medical transport services as a combined group have hundreds of open jobs posted today in Southwest Georgia. This limits the availability of services, sometimes dramatically, to what's able to be provided in our region and shows that the key need uh, for this facility here today. The healthcare staff shortages is a real problem in our state, across the country, and has many complex components. ASU has been a leader that is partnering with Phoebe and others on positive improvements and expansion to their programs to help meet the needs of local health care uh, employers. Albany State, under the leadership of Dr. Frederick, has been very proactive in dialogue and formulating solutions for health care providers in our region. Phoebe has enjoyed an amazing collaborative relationship and partnership with ASU and its leadership team. No, the wind is not helping. Phoebe and Albany State have partnered on the ASN nursing program to add nursing faculty and provide stipends for faculty peer tutors. We have together helped expanded clinical rotations for all the Albany State programs here uh, at the, at the uh, Western Campus. We've provided monetary scholarships for the EMT program uh, at ASU and two years ago collaborated su successfully on a new special project that would become the Summer Health and STEM Academy where this past summer, 60 high school students from Doherty and surrounding counties who excel in science, technology, engineering, and math all were given the unique opportunity to learn about career opportunities in healthcare. Phoebe family members led classes for the students and spent time with them in the hospital setting. This was a true health career exploration through hands-on simulation learning based on a strong partnership between ASU and Phoebe. I'll digress for a second because I remember very vividly uh, two years ago a meeting with the president of Albany State. She was extremely passionate about reaching into the middle, middle schools and high schools. And I know all of you that work with her, when she gets passionate about something, there ain't no, you're not saying no to, to Dr. Frederick. So this was going to happen, whether Phoebe wanted it to happen or not, it was going to happen. 
So it's been an amazing program. Um, it's grown uh, the last two years. It was unbelievable to see all the students in the hospital learning about career opportunities that they had no clue existed until that day and Albany State bringing them to Phoebe and helping mentor them and, and show them the possibilities that are out there for them and their families. Chancellor Purdue, President Frederick, Vice President Fleming and Dr. Brinson, thank you for inviting Phoebe to this wonderful expansion and groundbreaking. We greatly appreciate your long-term partnership and congratulate you on this massive investment in the community and region. Phoebe and its 5,000 employees, volunteer community boards, and medical staff are very excited about the nursing and health science simulation facility at Albany State and what it means not just for the students of ASU, but our Southwest Georgia community's long-term prosperity and ability to provide much-needed health care services. Chancellor Purdue talked about the economic development. Uh, we've got the chair of the Economic Development Commission here, Chris Hatcher. Um, we talk a lot about how this works, Chancellor, and you're so correct. I mean, investing in these type of institutions helps feed the community, brings new employers to our community. You're so right in your comments about how amazing this facility, the state's investment, and how it will be um, brought forward. The 4C Academy that Chris helps lead is an amazing investment the state has made, and this is another investment along those same lines to drive economic development here in Southwest Georgia, and we're so thankful uh, for that. I will end with a quote from Walt Disney. You can dream, create, design, and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it requires people to make the dream a reality. There are great people at ASU, and they have made today's vision a reality with partnership, hard work, and dedication to a goal. Thank you all very much. Good afternoon, Chancellor Purdue, President Frederick, elected officials, Albany State University faculty, and everyone else. Brown Church is a tough act to follow. As a chief nursing officer, I will tell you, and in the presence of all of the witnesses, there has never been a time he has said no to the CNO when I've asked for something with regard to patient care or nursing, and I see a lot of smiles in the audience. But has anyone heard that there is a nursing shortage, a healthcare faculty shortage? Absolutely. So there have been many comments and positive accolades about the partnership and the relationship that we have and that we value with Albany State University. But from a nurse's perspective, what does a center for simulation and health sciences, what does that mean? That means that people are able to learn in a safe environment. When Chancellor Purdue said that he practiced on goats, well, I can tell you several years ago, and it seemed like only, only yesterday, and if I told you how long I was a nurse, you'd actually calculate my age. But I'm proud to let you know I've been a registered nurse for 46 years, and I have loved every day of being a registered nurse and what I bring to patient care. But several years ago, we would never have been able to practice in a simulation center. It would be practicing on each other or taking that experience, learning something in a classroom, and then working with your patient. Today, what a simulation center means is that there is a safe environment to bring the skill to learn that mastery of what you learn in the classroom. And you practice in a very immersive and innovative environment that tests your skills, that tests your knowledge, so it's safe, so that you're never faced in a situation of lacking that confidence. I couldn't be more proud as a nurse to partner with Albany State University on what is coming down as a state-of-the-art simulation and healthcare science center. That will be extremely innovative and exciting for the students that you prepare. You prepare excellent students and of course we want everyone as much as possible to come and join our team at Phoebe. But the value that a very appropriate and innovative simulation center provides, it is invaluable because what you're doing is preparing our healthcare team for the future to be innovative, to provide safe care, and to practice in an environment where they learn the confidence and the mastery. Because although no one wants to be in a hospital, think about your own experience. Think about yourself. You want that nurse, you want that healthcare worker to be not only caring and knowledgeable, but you want them to be compassionate and proficient, especially if they're doing invasive procedures. So congratulations and kudos to everyone here at Albany State University and the faculty that you know will be working hand in hand in making this innovative center the best that it can be in the region. I appreciate the opportunity to share my perspective as a nurse and thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you both Brian and Evelyn. 
and thank you for your continued partnership. As we talk about our business partnerships here in the Albany Doherty community, a little tidbit that you may not know is that on last year, Albany State University had over a $231 million economic impact in Southwest Georgia alone. By building this facility that's well over $8 million in construction and design fees, we're going to be able to increase our impact here in our local community, provide jobs for our construction workers and additional for faculty and staff that will be able to work inside this brand new facility. In that regard, I want to speak to and want to welcome and thank some of our partners that helped make this happen. Uh, first, we have locally the local contract, I believe Artesian contracted Mr. Glenn Singfield. Mr. Singfield, if you please stand. Uh, we have uh, our, our, my favorite partner to meet with on Google Meet, who's standing in the back. We have Anya Matthews with PDC Solutions. Anya is a part of the project management team for the construction and design. We have Jason Sims, who's here with us from SLAM Collaborative. They helped design the building. They put it all together. So Dr. Brinson, if a door is not where it needs to be, Dr. Doze, you should see Jason and his team. They put it there. Uh, certainly now the big partner is going to help make it happen uh, that's got a lot of this out here today and there are several people here uh, i know david is one of them but our partners from ajax are actually going to build the building along with mr singfield and his team ajax construction anybody here from ajax wave your hand there we go thank you all for being here david and, and the team thank you and of course, financing the operation after we received the dollars from the General Assembly are our friends from GSFIC. I believe I saw DeMario earlier, and perhaps Nikki may be around. Uh, there you are. Stand up. Thank you all very much. They're the owners right now until we get it out of the ground. Thank you very much, Nikki, DeMario. And really important to recognize, I want to make sure we do this before the program is over. That's normally when these things happen. But our friends here at Albany State are stakeholders. These people who are processing requisitions, who are receiving reimbursements, who are meeting at 7 in the morning or 6 in the morning with design professionals in the construction team, and mostly led aptly by Dr. Ivory Lucas, who is our executive director of facilities planning, design, and construction. Dr. Lu Dr. Lucas? And then really important, these are some good friends of mine, and we, we tag and we tussle, but they help make everything happen. The folks in the uh, Finance and Administration Division here at Albany State University, now led aptly by Dr. Antonio Pagis. Dr. Pagis? <laughs> Including our budget friends, Ms. Ryan, Accounts Payable, the Marketing and Communications Team, the Development Alumni Relations Team, and most importantly, without further ado, our Facilities management team, the young men and young women every day who are making these buildings possible. I say they are the last ones here and first ones here each day to make sure we can do the jobs on behalf of all the 6,300 students. But now here's a real important part, and I met with these folks earlier today and talked to them when they arrived. The actual users of the building, Chancellor, when we started to build the building, President Frederick was insistent and has been insistent, talk to the people who are going to be in the building, AL. Don't build the most efficient building you think it should be, AL. Talk to the people who are going to be in the building. And so, you know, anybody who knows me, I try to be very efficient with the use of money, but I listen to the president because I do like being employed. And so here is the opportunity where they were able to provide great feedback. And so we were already good friends, but we became fantastic friends, texting and emailing and meeting on a regular basis. Dr. Sarah Brinson, Dr. Brinson. And so in that regard, we're going to bring next Dr. Angela Peters, who is our chief academic officer here at Albany State University. She'll be responsible for wrangling the faculty and the staff that are going to be working in the building and assigning spaces. It's real important for you all to know, the people on the faculty and the staff, that we do not do that in facilities management, that that will be done by academic affairs. So without further ado, we're going to introduce Dr. Angela Peters, followed up uh, by Dr. Dean, the dean of the college, Darden College of Health Professions, Dr. Sarah Brinson. So Dr. Peters and Dr. Brinson. Good afternoon and welcome to Albany State where excellence is the standard. I um, have to thank President uh, Frederick for her vision. I have to thank you, Chancellor, and, uh, and Regent uh, Rivera Holmes uh, for their vision and for their support. And definitely have to thank our legislators, our Phoebe new family, because we are a family, and everything that you said, uh, uh, Mr. CFO, about our partnerships and about the many students that we have um, uh, that we are bringing into this partnership and the scholarships that you have given, we are sure that you're going to increase that more. So we appreciate it and we thank you now. Um, but this, is, this has been a long time coming. And I also like to thank our faculty and our staff and all of our family at ASU. This has been a long time coming. And our, um, our Phoebe partners talked about the 66 
uh, middle, uh, 66 high school, 9th, 10th, 11th grade, and 12th grade students that we brought into ASU through our summer, um, our pre-college uh, summer uh, STEM and health science boot camp last year, and how we probably doubled from the first year that we partnered with Phoebe. But for us to bring them in to the summer last year, and for us to talk to them about this simulation lab that is forthcoming, and for us to talk to them about the vision, and for them to buy into the vision, uh, and for them to want to come to ASU and to be a part of health sciences is a big deal for us. And so we know that there is a, a health care shortage. We know that there is a, a nursing shortage. Um, but with you all, with the chancellor's support, with our regents' with support, our legislative support, um, and our Phoebe partner support, ASU wants to be a part of the solution. So ASU wants to provide not only a quality education for our, uh, our students in Georgia and, and in many other uh, states, but we want to be able to be a partner in a solution in helping to, um, to make smaller the gap or to, uh, to remedy the gap where we have a large health care shortage. So I just wanted to thank you all for that. And I wanted to tell you that it is an honor to see such an essential and vital facility come to fruition to benefit not only our students but our community. The team has worked hard, they have planned, they have replanned, they have worked tirelessly to make this idea come to life. I'm proud to stand before you as a provost here at Albany State today as we break ground on what will be a life-changing facility for generations to come. Again, here at Albany State and, and ASU folks, I need, to back, I need you to back me up so that our visitors can see what we do at Albany State and what we're about. So visitors, I need you to listen to us, and faculty, I need you to chime in. Good afternoon. Excellent. And that's what we do at Albany State. Excellent is the standard. Welcome. Good afternoon. I think they saved the wrong person for last, because if there's anybody in this audience that's more excited than me about this day, I want you to come forward. <laughs> I cannot tell you the number of hours and the amount of time that has gone in to getting where we are today, but I would not be here without my faculty and staff. So all of our nursing and health science faculty and staff, please stand. And this is not all of them, but this is part of them. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have spent countless numbers of hours together talking about this building and the things that we want in it. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I kind of twisted their arm and made them come. We have a group of students in the back, back here in the back. Wave my students. <laughs> These are actually some of our health science students um, that are here with us this semester that will be a part of this building when it comes, comes to fruition. Um, we are so grateful for all of our community, for all of our students, and for all of our faculty and staff. Thank you so much for everything that you have all done. And we look forward to seeing you with the ribbon cutting. <laughs>